We brought the Google Home out. Actually, this is yours. Yep, that's mine. Uh, because you have been doing a little hacking with this as well. Yes, I got one of these as soon as I could because I'm really interested in home automation and I've been really excited to see right. what Google's going to do with it. Uh, they've had several attempts, you know, the Nest thermostat, all this stuff. But when they came out with Google Home, they said, well, this is going to be integrated with if this, then that, and all these other things like Alexa is. And I thought, okay, this is the ticket right here. This is what I want to use to automate my home. So I got one uh, for that, and I've been playing around with it, and I thought I'd bring in some things to show you what I've been doing. Amazon's Echo works with the SmartThings Hub and the Wemo mm -hmm. Hub. A lot of hubs yep. already out of the box. Yep. Does the Google Home work with any hubs it, out of the box? It does. In fact, they just announced this week they're going to be supporting, they already supported, supported SmartThings, they supported Philips Hue, Okay. Uh, and they announced they're going to be supporting Wemo and a bunch of others. So this is cool, because so this you is can really control cool. a lot of yep. stuff with this and already. And this week they just released released their API uh, for this as well. Um, and they announced updates to what used to be called Brillo, that's now called Android Things, um, as well as Weave. So right. you can actually download Android Things and run it on a Raspberry Pi and start, uh, if you're a developer, if you want to start working on that, you can start working on that now. But if, like me, all you want to do is control a few things, a few light switches around the house, you don't want to go spend a lot of money, again, like me, Cheapskate, don't want to go spend a lot of money on Philips Hue bulbs and things like that. You can actually drive them yourself with either an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. It's pretty so easy. this would replace the hardware that you, you're, you got the Google Home. Yep. It's going to talk to these directly? It's going to talk, well, you can talk, talk to talk it directly. To if this, then that. It's going to talk to if this, then that. Got That's it. the way I do it because it's a lot easier. Um, right. So you can set up a rest, or they call it an applet now, and if this then. So that. on one end, the applet will have a connection to Google yes, Home. Yes, right. And that's built that's into the this. this yep, the okay. this is Google Home. If, right. if you say this to Google Home, if I can show you what it looks like. Do you want yeah, to Yeah, let's look? see it. I can put it up on my uh, I've got screen. it up on mine here. Oh, okay, If uh, Kara's got my, my screen. Do you, Kara? Yeah, there she is right there. Ah. Perfect. So this is Applet Maker, and uh, the this in Applet Maker, when you go in here, sign up for an account, click on this, and you can search in here for Google, and you'll see Google Assistant right there on the screen and then you can set it up to do a couple of different things, a simple phrase or a phrase with a with a text ingredient or a phrase with a number. Um, and well, this is pretty, can, can Amazon Echo do this? Or no, this is pretty sophisticated. I'm, in, I'm intrigued by this. Uh, I do not know, because I don't me have look. any Amazon Echo. Yeah, let me you look. look that up. Yeah. So you can say, open the garage door, for example, and then you can give it a couple different options of how to say that. And then you can tell, um, the recipe to respond to you. This is what I like. You can say, I want Google Home to tell me this in response. So we can say, no problemo. <laughs> so you're actually Opening writing a script to talk. Garage door, excuse my spelling there. We'll just say that. Um, yeah, so that's it, that's the trigger. And then for the that, and here's the important part, you have so to go to the maker th channel. The only thing I can find on if this and that with an Amazon Echo is when it, and I actually use this, uh -huh. when a timer goes off on your uh -huh. Echo, uh -huh. your phone will get a notification. This is much more sophisticated. So, it is. You know, it's interesting because Amazon really has a head start with Echo. There's 5,000 Echo skills now. But this means anybody can write a simple skill right there and if this then that yep. for the google home yep and all you really have to be running for this i'm using the maker channel so you know i'm running a web server on both of these devices both the uh this is actually an esp8266 programmed through the arduino rde ide and then raspberry pi of course is running a little python script that is is a web server as well but that's basically it you just do those two things and as long as you have the right the right ports open through your router at home you might have to use port port forwarding on your router to get those ports through to these devices. But as long as you have that set up, then you can start making requests through Google Home and it'll actually go through and trigger um, uh, these devices. You wanna see what it looks like? Yeah, I um, might be wrong on the Echo, by the way. I think I was looking in the wrong I'm section. I'm sure chat room will tell us here yeah. in a minute. So it looks let's like try the, you, to- It looks uh, like you can do more stuff with an, with an Echo than I thought. I was searching uh, for Echo, you have to search for her name. Oh yes, don't say it. Her name. And by the way, we're about to trigger this thing. So turn, hit the mute switch on your uh, oh, yeah. We've read, Google Home is, devices. This is getting to be a bigger and bigger <laughs> problem because so many people listen to our shows yeah. on these attached devices. Yeah. So mute your Google Home now. Right. Turn off your turn off on your your, phones, uh, your phone. Whatever it is, because we're gonna we're gonna trigger it. So here we go. So let's try the uh, the Raspberry Pi. I have this set up to an LED, a little simple little LED here, and this could be. Uh, yeah, I was uh, wrong. The the Echo will do a lot of these. It will do. Samples. I thought it yeah, would. Yeah, 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 I thought yeah. it must. Because they're a little was, bit. I was searching along. for the word Echo, not her name. That so let's let's mistake. try to trigger the LED. Okay, Google. Turn on my lights. Okay, 
Okay, I switched the light on the Raspberry Pi. Oh, nice. See, so it turned on. Okay, Google, turn the lights off. Okay, I switched the light on the Raspberry Pi. So there it goes. So it goes on and That's off. That's very simple. Like now, this wow. could be uh, hooked up to a relay that was then hooked up to your actual lights in your room. Uh, so it actually could be, because all this doing is triggering a signal right, to this LED, but that signal could be attached to a relay device that's actually switching the AC power in your home. Yeah, this is just a proof of to. concept. You proof could see concept. that if you could switch something on and off, right. you could do almost anything, right? Right, yep, exactly. Yeah. So then we could also trigger this one. Um, this is also running a web server, so we could trigger this one. Can you see what that says? The so, new so the Echo can do what, what we just did. Is on there. It okay, says Google? the new screensavers. Uh -huh. Zoom okay, in a Google, tighter. open the garage door. No problemo, opening the garage door now. Right, ah. so now it says garage open, right? So I'm just, again, we can't really open a garage door here in the studio or trigger anything to do that. So I just programmed this little LED. Or so show uh, me the OLED recipe display. for that. Yeah, on sure. If this and that. So sure. we can see kind of how you would program it. Yeah, so let's go back here. This is the actual recipe. Like I said, you search for Google. Uh, whoops, 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 whoops. Go back a couple more steps. Okay, you already okay. Get, you already got a this. I already got that. So this this is the this, right? So, so you want to say the, the trigger phrase open the garage door. Right. And when you hear and you can actually program in other ways, I optional like that. ways, right? Yeah. Uh, you could program uh, open sesame. How do you spell sesame? S C A S uh, open it. Spell it phonetically. It. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Open it. Um, you can and you could even say another way, right? So right. depending on how, three different ways to say this, it'll do the same. Oh, and action. you told it to say no problemo. And I told nice. it to say and no problemo. Open, open again. No problemo. Open. Open. Inging, opening. Inging. Open. Opening. Inging, <laughs> opening the garage door, right? But you can have it say anything you, you want. You can have it say whatever you want. Yeah. You can say, yeah, you're my master, or yes, right master. away, sir, or yeah. whatever you want. It'll say whatever you put in there. Um, and then for the that, you have to subscribe to the Maker channel. Aha. And what the Maker channel allows you to do is send outgoing web requests. Come on, Maker channel. Maker channel. Oh, it's thinking. So the Echo, Dr. Mom is telling me she's done a lot of this stuff. The Echo can do it with Smart Home. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, but that's very neat. Yeah. In the Maker channel, you can set up an incoming or an outgoing uh, request. The so the Maker channel does it by IP address? How does it yep, know? Yep, so here it is. You set up a URL web request, right? Okay. So you, like I said, there's a web server running on both of these devices. Got it. And you set up your web request and you can have a custom page, for example, or you could have a form field that you're, you're filling out uh, automatically with this web request. And then once that goes through, of course, you've got your program running on these devices that triggers whatever you want to happen. And you can do, from that point, you can do whatever you want. You can trigger relays to go off. You can trigger strings of LEDs to blink and do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, That's kind of neat that it's using a, a web get. Yeah, a simple, a it's simple, right? Um, yeah. At least for, for people that have been in IT or they know technology, um, this is the sim simplest way to do it. Really. So you have Apache running on your Raspberry Pi. It's actually Light TPD. Light TPD, Because it's okay. lightweight, right? Yep. That's running on the Pi. On the uh, ESP8266, they have a built-in web server library that nice. you can use in the Arduino IDE to make that run. Okay. Um, very small, very, very, very light. And then the server sees the GET request. Mm -hmm. And does whatever and you program it. it to do. Yep. And you program that how? In, in, in HTML? Or? So the, so the uh, uh, ESP8266 would be done in the Arduino IDE, which is C++. Okay. Um, and the uh, I used a Python script on the Raspberry oh, nice. Pi because that's easy. But they have the hooks for turning on Absolutely. lights and oh, yeah. uh, other things. Yeah, like you're that. basically just controlling the GPIO pins. Uh, set that GPIO pin high or low or whatever nice. you want to do. Well, I, I have one of these at home and I have a couple of Raspberry Pis. As many people I know watching yeah. do, lying around. And I can't wait to play with it. Yep. Hey, an update, by the way, on the Google Wi-Fi that we talked about last week. I was able to get it working. Um, it was one of the units was kerfluggered and hmm. uh, I kept getting the same error message on the phone app. I tried and tried and tried and it said, you know, call us, call us, call us. So finally I called him and the guy told me how to reset the Google Wi-Fi device. Maybe this is somewhere buried in the documentation. There's not much documentation. In fact, as I remember, it's more like an Ikea hmm. instruction with just pictures. Right. But if you press, there's a button, there is one button on those Google Wi-Fi devices. If you press and hold it as you plug it in, as one would almost expect. Sure 
from a router, uh, it will reset it. It re-downloaded its firmware, mm. so it really kind of refreshed itself, and then it worked just fine. Oh, good. So there's an update on that. That 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 solved the problem. I was able to put it all together, uh, and and everything worked. So awesome. I had a bad unit, I guess, is what happened. Cool. I should say, Leo, before we move on, you know, shameless plug. All of this stuff that I've just been talking about will be in my book. That's coming out next year oh. called Linux for Makers. Oh, nice. So if you're if Where you're will we get that? Is that Make this, Magazine doing Make that? Make Magazine, yeah. So online, Barnes & Noble. Fantastic. Congratulations. Whatever. Just FYI. Oh, that's great. Well, yep. we'll, you know, we'll give you a big plug when that comes out. Yeah.